Okay. Comments from the public? I'm sorry. Mr. Ballerini, um, I, um, as you know, we have had um, some comments at the microphone recently, as the board knows, about mathematics. And I wanted to take this opportunity to make an announcement just to show um, a few of the items that are newly available on our district website that I think would be very helpful. Uh, before I do that, I think it's very important for the board and the public to know that as a district, we do not subscribe to any particular instructional methodology that's advocated by any commercially produced textbook. We have a highly professional teaching staff. They use textbooks, certainly, but the textbooks are not the curriculum, nor do the textbooks de determine any instructional methodology. And one of the things that I'd like to look at, with, with your permission, is to take a look at some of the data and see, if, see what the data says about textbooks. So if we, if you, if we might just take a look. Uh, this, this chart represents the, the fullest aggregation of, at the elementary level, mathematics achievement results as measured on the state tests. It's a longitudinal study from 0203 to 0506, the most recent year for which we have data available. Um, all of the information from which this set of data was compiled um, has been presented over the years um, to the board at public session. Um, it, it, is, it is, when I present it, I present it separately by grade level for the purposes here, they are aggregated. The red bars represent school performance and the blue bars represent our comparison group performance. So you'll notice that the blue bars are all exactly the same for each school and the red bars vary. Uh, this is the, essentially the passing rate in the state test NJ ASK. And um, you'll notice excellent results throughout. One of the things that we look for is for the red bars to be higher than the blue bars. And we have that, I think, consistently. Um, Maybe except for just one incident. Just one. Yeah. And when it will it? Two. Two. Two? Mm -hmm. First year at Willard. And First year at Willard and third year at Laval. Okay. Alright. Um, this next graph is, uh, it's the same kind of a setup. The red and the blue represent the same thing. This time we are looking, looking at advanced proficient performance. And when I look at this, um, again, we are looking for the red to be higher than the blue. We have that in many cases. Um, one of the things that, that I think about, certainly given some of the conversation that we have had at board meetings lately, um, is looking at the text, the primary text materials that are used at each of our elementary schools. And I'm sorry that it's not in here in the grid, but it's, it actually, it works out quite nicely. Ridge and Somerville are both using the um, everyday math as their primary text material. Orchard and Travell are both using investigations in number data and space. And Hawes and, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll stop touching it. Hawes and Willard are using uh, the Scott Forsman, Addison Wesley text. Um, so when I look at that, um, I do see some differences. Um, I do see in overall generally some lower scores at Travell that has been commented on here at the board table. Uh, we are certainly working to address that. But what I don't see is um, any evidence that a particular text material would be the, the causal factor for any difference in student achievement. So I thought the board would find that interesting. And um, may I ask you a question, please? So um, 
In, in looking at this, then, um, you begin to sort of look at what other factors might um, be um, causing a, a difference. And um, you, you begun to address this at Travel, and what are you doing? Uh, we, we, are, we are working at Travel. Um, Ms. Leininger and I have, uh, and certainly continuously, we always are looking at the results of the data. Um, as, as we have discussed previously, uh, we have let parents at Travel know that as part of our ongoing program development, we, are, we always see it as our obligation when improved editions of text materials become available. We always do review them if we judge them to be worthy of consideration. Um, we look at using them with students, and that is beginning right now at Travel School. We will continue to work on that over the summer. And uh, we have notified parents about that. And we will be asking parents for, for their reflections and their input based on this improved edition. Uh, Regina, um, just as a reminder, in what year did we change, change district factor, factor group? groups? That's what I was curious. Uh, thank you, Mr. Valerini. Uh, the district factor group has uh, went from an I to a J. We have been there for the last two years. So, so that was 2005? Oh, 405 was our first year. That's correct. So if I'm looking at this um, accurately or correctly, the last four bars, the, the last two blue, the last two red on each of our schools are when the district factor group changed, right. correct? That's right. And if I'm looking at what's happening, irrespective of what the actual raw number was, every one of our schools compared to the district factor group is showing ongoing improvement. Is that correct? I would agree with that. And Thank you. You, you can see the shift in the blue is the comparison group, and every well, the blue is the same in every for every school. Mm -hmm. So that increase in the advanced proficiency in the comparison group is reflective of moving from an I to oh, a J. J is the highest comparison group available. Okay, so I, I thought that that information might be helpful. Um, again, if, if I may just reiterate that the textbooks do not determine our curriculum, um, we support our teachers in teaching a balanced program of mathematics, something that I have discussed around this table before. When we talk about the balance, we talk about a balance between conceptual understanding and computational accuracy and fluency. 